Well, hello. How are you guys? Right on. Where Where are you in the world, Dan? I wish I was in Maui, even though it looks like I'm in Maui, yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm working from my friend's house for the day. So I, it's somewhat resemblant of Maui, shall we say. What state are you in? California. Okay, great. So tell me about the amazing show. I'll start with you, Tom, because you obviously executive produced it as, as well. How was that? Well, it was a pretty terrific way to launch a new company. It's Renegade Entertainment with my partner, Courtney Penn. We started this company in 2019, right before the world shut down. And uh, this was one of the first things that came across our desk. Um, we really connected to Candace Fox's amazing novel called Crimson Lake. Anybody's into murder mysteries and good old fashioned uh, detective stories, this, this is for you. This is um, Candace Fox is an Australian uh, writer, but she's becoming an internationally known uh, known writer, and we feel very fortunate that we got to jump on and tell uh, you know and, and adapt Candace's novel now called Trapo, and uh, coming to a screen near you. Very exciting, and for you, Nicole. I mean, your character is juicy to say the yeah. least. How was it playing her? Uh, it was it was juicy. That's such a great word. To <laughs> Yeah, it was a dream. Like I've never, like I've never had the opportunity to play anyone quite like her, and nor have I even seen a character come. Like a character has never come my way like this. It's like it's all the things you want as an actor. Like you know, she's deeply flawed and broken, and has been through a lot of trauma in her life. And just watching how a person navigates the world, you know, post all of her stuff. Um, is was really yeah it was really interesting to me and doing it with a, a partner in crime like Ted mm. <laughs> it was so juicy. Yeah, <laughs> juicy literally and figuratively partner in crime shall we say <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the most interesting things that people are saying in the US is a lot of the posters around town are saying the truth lies beneath the surface when advertising the film so pretty without- good giving too much away. I'll start with you, Tom. What does that mean? People want to know a little bit more about that. The truth lies beneath the surface. I like that. Yes. Um, Yeah, well, it certainly does. And, you know, with any good mystery, you're looking for not only a good crime to solve, but essentially, I mean, in my view, a good detective story is really about uncovering secrets about yourself. Uh, Ted's got, uh, Ted, Ted and Amanda are about as opposite as you could possibly get on the earth between two human beings. <laughs> but the one thing they've got in common is that they both of their lives were shattered, shattered by events that they didn't necessarily have control over. The, uh, you know, it's like people get painted black, especially now people just get painted with this hard with these brushes who knows where the truth lies you know uh, uh, and and in our story and i think it's an important you know part of the story is is the, how the media has sort of bl- blows things up and can crush somebody um in a way that you, you need to be made of pretty strong stuff to recover from and uh i'd say that ted and amanda for all of their differences are both made of pretty strong stuff. That's amazing. And what about for you, Nicole? What does that mean to you? The truth lies beneath the surface. I mean, lies could have two meanings there, which I think is interesting. Um, to, uh, yeah, I mean, the truth of the of the murder murders that they uh, that they investigate, and also the truth within their lives. Um, it you have to go deeper like nothing is what it seems and that's what I love about these two characters is um on the surface um they've been you know they've been painted with with a brush uh, and you kind of want to hate them or not like them or but <laughs> for whatever reason you people are drawn to them and there is an energy about them and I think that's the truth that's you know that's underneath the facade that we all put on to like get through life um so right. I think it's about, like just 
and it's the same with a mystery, like, a, you know, a good murder mystery. It's never what it seems and you have to delve deeper and you like to find, to find the truth. See what I did? It's a snake. See that? Do you see yeah. that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's cool because I think so many families and flatmates and boyfriend and girlfriends will like be arguing about this. Like, I think this is going to happen. Like, no. And then obviously at the end they, they will find out. So. Yeah, it's great. I've been so because obviously it's aired in Australia. We've uh, it's been on for like like two months, four, eight. Yeah, two months ago we aired in Australia. I mean, you and just so had the last episode, right, Nicole? Yeah, last weekend. Oh. Um, and so having people messaging throughout, like it's this person, and then like coming back and going, oh no, like it was that person. Like watching them come along for the journey and like having like just tricking people essentially. Like I. Uh-huh. I'm really but honestly, it's got to be if it's an honest, it has to be an honest trick. That's the key to a good murder mystery. You know, it's like the clues are there if you if you yeah. want to see them. You know, you're not being deceived no. by the storyteller, but you, but you are being, you know, you know, like you said, tricked. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's, yeah. So that, that, that's been interesting to watch people like be invested and be excited and then be surprised, which is great. Right. Well, I'm so excited for the Twitter conversations. We're out of time and uh, I can't wait for it to air in the US. So congrats, guys. We appreciate hearing that. Thanks, Dan. Of course. Goodbye for now.